Yeah, and they yeah, just or, basically say, y'all are stupid. They don't know how to mm-hmm. do it. They don't know this. Maybe they don't have internet. Maybe they don't know how it works. And then he goes to Harlem, and then everybody's he like, why would I not know how to do that? Why is that racist? Right why would that be this? It's over on 32nd Street. I got a phone. It's right here. My kids have internet. What's the big deal? And it's just like, you idiots. Like, why do you stop listening to the talking heads that are the actual racist ones in the name of being not racist or anti-racist? Like, anyway, it's just... And- Hey, everybody. Welcome to a special series of Contra Thoughts. Got Jason Whitaker here, Dear Woke Christian, hey. his YouTube channel and Spotify. Thanks so much. Uh, what are we doing? Chapter 5 today, right? A new We're talking about Chapter 5, A chapter New five. Priesthood. Bloody Bauckham's book. I don't have the dust yeah, jacket. Book. Yeah. Did you notice, does yours get, if your hands are wet, does the black kind of come off the ink a little bit? That no, happened to me. My that. hands were wet. So just be careful. Uh-uh. Just be careful. Um. So he, we've looked at a few chapters now, um, a new priesthood. So Bauckham hits up and kind of starts, I mean, starts it with saying they're similar to the Levites, right? The Old Testament. Right. And uh, he hits right on the head, I think a lot of people, with Gnosticism. And he explains what Gnosticism is. Ethnic Gnosticism, right. Ethnic Gnosticism, that's right. Right. Um, have, it's... It's so obvious, right? But at the same time, people don't see it, right? I I mean, do you experience that? Do you see that in your day-to-day? Like, is that something that, as far as like, not online, because it's a little different, but where people believe things in kind of a mysterious, mystical sort of, making any sense no no it makes perfect sense i don't think people realize that they do it i don't think people realize that they're saying something like oh richard has more insight or more information about this subject because of his ethnicity or because of his upbringing than i do now could you have a a different perspective absolutely um Mm -hmm. i believe you were raised in california i was raised in the midwest so by default you'll know more about uh, sunshine and surfboards than I would, but I know more about snow sleds and, and lakes. So, I mean, we got that, but that doesn't make it, that one makes sense. That makes sense because we were truly raised somewhere different. But to say that Richard has a corner market on mm-hmm. certain knowledge and therefore he can only speak about certain things, I think that's a lap too far. So yeah. we can have differences. Thank God we do have differences. But in this regard, he's saying that you have special knowledge. You mm-hmm. have more. You because I could have been. I, I maybe I could have had an uncle that lived in California, and I went there every summer. Me yeah. and you would have very similar situations if, in fact, that had happened. But in this scenario, you have more knowledge, or I have greater knowledge, simply because of externals and mm-hmm. our experiences. Um, because they don't want to say it, but um, and Dr. Bauckham talks about it. They're really just saying that every person that has the same melanin content that I do and every person has the same melanin content that you do has the exact same perspective. Yeah. And that's that's just ludicrous. Yeah, that's huge. I think that's really huge. Um, That's a good point because, yeah, we don't. (laughs) We just don't. don't. And and even when you're the year you're born. I mean, I'm how old are you again? I'm entirely too old. Forty seven. Wow. You could have said thirty seven. I would have believed you. Um but you wouldn't want to lie. My chin, my chin, my chin yeah. gave me all I'll the tell way. You, I'll tell you, these guys are, yeah, they're coming in thick. Uh, so I'm 38. So you're, you're a little bit older than me, but I remember, and there's kind of, you look at, there's like, I'm not quite a millennial. There's technically like between an X and a, and a millennial uh, right. where you had like an analog childhood and a digital upbringing where I remember a time that we didn't have a cell phone and this and this and this, right? And internet. We didn't have internet and uh, not until... I was like 14. And so even that, whereas somebody who's born in like 88 or 78 or 73, we might all look the same, have the same type of thing, whatever, even from the same area, go to the same high school. And yet we still have different experiences because we got a toy differently. Our parents were different. Our This parent was, di- they were divorced, so on, so on. And so yeah, yeah. 
it, it's just this the lumping, and I'm thankful that Bachum really takes these full on. And with the ethno, ethnic gnosticism, I don't think it 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 ends there. Uh, I think it starts there in the sense that we now think everybody has this certain. It's like a both and. It's like you have special knowledge, and yet you're also the same, right? Like mm-hmm. everybody looks just like me, or just looks like you, looks just like you. We all have the exact same experience, and yet at the same time, you, Jason, have this specific type of thing that only you can say. And if Richard says anything, he's racist, or you know, or anybody else. Um, it's weird. I mean, it's just it's just well, weird. I I've always said that I feel like that's that's that um hypocrisy of language that I can say something and the, the internet won't care. Yeah. You say the exact same thing and the internet will lose its absolute ever loving mind. <laughs> to me, I think that's, that's just the hypocrisy is silly. One, yeah. I don't think it, any of us should say it. We shouldn't say words that are grossly derogatory to people with less melanin or people from India or people from sub Sahara or anything else. And on the same note, we shouldn't. So, but we also, we shouldn't do it. And I'd say that to, and I'm talking to we, we, the people that look like me and have the same melanin content, we shouldn't say things like that. But that's a seems to be a, a statement that doesn't um that falls on deaf ears. But yeah. um back to Dr. Bacham here. I think um the ethnic Gnosticism again, that really starts off the, the argument of the new priesthood mm-hmm. pretty well. Um and he does a, a fantastic job of pointing out a lot of the things that we notice that um, like on page 94, um, the singular black experience or perspective. Yeah. And we saw this run amok last year, r- days after the situation with George Floyd, mm-hmm. wherever you fell on the spectrum um, of, of what happened in Minnesota, you had people with light with less melanin reaching out to people with more melanin, telling them how they felt. Um, I, we know you're um, you're feeling this kind of way. Like my yeah. company did an entire whoop to do about it, as if everybody truly felt that way. Yeah. Or saw the situation the exact same. Am I saying that that we should not care? By no means. Don't hear what I didn't say. What I am saying is that not everyone has the exact same experience or the same perspective mm-hmm. as it relates to this. And just because they have the same skin color doesn't mean anything. Right. And um, and so, yeah, that was just a, a big standout to me. But I'll let you have it. Oh, no, that's 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 a good point. And and really that where that's where it goes down to of the both and of you look this way. Therefore, you must think this way. And then mm-hmm. also, also at the same time, praising and raising up the individual so high. You know, we do this without everything. Everything's customizable, including mm-hmm. your gender. And it's like. Uh, like there's there's literally like oil and water with with this worldview and it's it's really just a it's just a secular worldview it's just it's always Mm -hmm. just names are different right terms are different it's all just godlessness and unbelief but they're taking oil and water and they're trying to emulsify it and they shake it up real good and eventually it separates back apart and then they do it again and it's like it's not gonna work like it just doesn't work y'all but i mean that's yeah the black perspective he talks about that he goes through uh the five myths six myths page 96 and 97. Um, and this, this hit home here in Kentucky. Uh, Brianna Taylor was in, yeah, she's in, she's in Louisville. Dude, there were riots. People didn't go downtown. Downtown was closed. People were, uh, scared. I mean, mm-hmm. of any, any tribe, tongue and nation, people were said to have come into Louisville. First, there was a March. Uh, it was like, like the black Panthers, but it wasn't black Panther. I forget what it was, but it was some guy. They're all dressed all in black, 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 right? Mm-hmm. And it's open carry state. Hey, open carry. Yeah. And one of the guys, nothing happened, praise God. But one of the guys shot accidentally a couple of their uh, followers. So it was a huge oh, deal wow. and just total idiot, right? Thankfully, nothing happened. But it was it was instant provocation. They wanted to cause a problem. They wanted a race war. They wanted fighting and uh, and, just, and it's I forget who was leading it. it was some guy, um, and. Is it is it good that Breonna Taylor got killed? No, of course not. No one is saying that. No one's defining and saying, oh, it's fine that this happened. But he goes through several of the myths with like police were at the wrong house. Number one, there's a no knock mm-hmm. warrant. Uh, the officers didn't announce themselves. All these things are myths. And yet yeah. 
I remember having conversations with coworkers who were a little more sympathetic. Um, and, and it's like, but what does the proverb say, right? The one who comes and, and answers, it seems right. And he says, yeah, this happened. Until he's like, yeah. cross-examined. Until he's yep. cross-examined. Then we realize, oh, I see. I see that other side of that coin. Um, well, but it was it was huge in Louisville. I mean, there was riots. Well, there was people. Oh, that's what I was going to say. There were people that were supposed to come into the city from out, outside. And they were, I don't know if this happened, but they, it was threatened that they were going to stop people that look like me and extort reparations. Basically, highway robbery. I don't know if it happened, but I mean, honestly, it was a first one of the first times in my life that I was like, OK, well, we're not going anywhere. And I'm literally driving straight home, not doing anything else, like I'm not getting on the freeway. Uh, and, right, and, right. I mean, they, they were said to like block the freeways in certain parts of downtown Louisville yeah. Yeah. and, and it, on the highway. It was just it was nuts all because of a girl got shot. And it sucks. That's terrible. But you don't make this to do when other people get shot, even if they look well, like Brianna Taylor. Well, at any given on any given weekend in Chicago, more people die than were killed by police. More people die in general than were killed by police all of 2020. So, yeah. So miss me with that. And I, I continue to push, like, you can pull up the, the Chicago Tribune. They have a running tally of murders in Chicago. It's It's crazy. And so, and, and may the Lord have mercy if it's a three-day weekend. Mm. Oh, this weekend's a three-day weekend. <laughs> this is a three-day weekend. Oh, yep. it is. Yeah. So, but my point is, there's far more that you can make hay about, but you won't. And that's the hypocrisy that we keep seeing. Now, this is not what Dr. Bauckham is talking about here. However, it is something that needs to be discussed. Like the hypocrisy of burning down Louisville over Breonna Taylor which again is not something that should happen. We don't want that to have happened. However, y'all ain't burning out Chicago because of what y'all doing. Mm. So the, the it needs to be said and it needs to be discussed. Um, I was doing a video on one of my favorite CRT priestesses. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> boy, just stay tuned. Dear World Christian on YouTube. <laughs> um, and she was talking about Oh my gosh, she just turns my, my screws. But she was just talking about how people with less melanin need to take um, responsibility for all these different things that really truly have no bearing on them, that truly you did not do. And I think the the issue that we see is that many of these people, as, as Dr. Bauckham pointed out um, earlier in the earlier chapter, this is a new religion. Mm -hmm. And because... When you ask people, hey, can you show me a biblical place where a latter generation repented for a former generation, where they took on that responsibility? Can you yeah. show me that? That and they themselves were not true perpetrators. Mm -hmm. So you got to miss some of those, you know, you know, some of those Israelite repenting things. They were actually a part of the of the problem. But can you show me one? Crickets. Yeah. Cricket. So especially you can talk skin about color, it. especially focused yes. on skin tone and where people Ooh. are from. Because we, we haven't even discussed it. I challenge and argue that you know racism isn't isn't a sin, <laughs> mm. like we see it. The sin is partiality. And so, yeah. guess what? Can you show me somebody that, that a scripture that shows that where people repented for something that their parents or even another generation did or may have done? Because otherwise, we. That's, I don't know what religion that is. Yeah. All no, right. it, it really is another religion. You're right. Um, yeah, Cameron, uh, I forget his first name, the attorney general. Great mm -hmm. guy. Solid. I think he's a believer, too. He's the attorney general of Kentucky. Black nice. guy. And 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 he, you know, he he did the fact, and this this is the thing that I want people to understand. Like especially those watching, like maybe you're like, well, I'm probably you're in agreement, but if you're not, but then we can at least press against people who might disagree. We want justice. We want real mm -hmm. justice, and we want justice based on truth. Which is if if it's true, it's it's it, if it's from the Lord, right? It's true, and if it's uh, true, it should be lined up with God's people. We don't right. want. We do not want. Even if it seems right to us that this woman died in her bed, which didn't happen. She was next right. to the, her boyfriend. 
And, you know, she wasn't really hanging out with the best people. I mean, let's be frank here. Now, not to make this about Brianna Taylor, it's still terrible that she got killed. But he also fired first, not the police, and on and on and on. That's the myths that he deals with. But the fact remains, well, she, she, she got killed. And it's wrong, and that's bad. And they, justice for Brianna. And all the facts of the case get announced by Cameron. And it wasn't... Uh, what most people wanted the the, uh-huh. the the CRT crowd and and the woke mob, as it were, they don't they didn't want that. But it's like what well, we need to step back, especially as Christians, and say, well, praise God, the truth came out because if Correct. if what the mobs want is actually what happens, we are in horrendous trouble, really quick, yes. because all of it is now mob rule. <laughs> And there is no justice and there won't be any justice. And trust me, it just it just bad news all the way around. So anyway, I just want to say that as an aside for people. But it didn't stop Joy Reid and other people. Um, I mean, the, the footnotes are insane. I mean, you can see them on the – Oh, the it, footnote them, course, game is on point. It's really good. Yeah, but yeah. she recites several of the myths. And it's like – one. and I think you've said this before. I think you maybe said this in our conversation with uh, Will that – it, once there's a narrative, somebody dies, or maybe it's in the book. I can't. I can't remember. Um, once somebody dies, a black guy died. All right, that's all that matters. Doesn't matter if he was breaking the law. Doesn't matter if he fired back. Doesn't matter anything. A black guy died. That's it. Now we're running with the story. The facts of the case don't matter. And we see even Christian pastors, you know, the Chandlers and the Platts and things like guys like that. And you're like, we just, you know, I think it was Will. Yeah, he mentioned this. Um, I think it was last episode about Matt Chandler in 2020 and that we just facts don't matter. We just need mm-hmm. to be solidarity. Da, 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 da. And you're like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like how to, how, since when do facts not matter? Since when does the truth not matter? Like it's just, and, and I think a better, even more digging in that question. Since when did facts not matter to Christians? Yes. When did truth not matter to Christians? Again, as I, as I say many times, pagans, y'all going to keep paganing. I'm not worried about you. Yeah. I, I do pray for you, but I'm not worried about you. Pagans, y'all going pagan. Inside of Christ's church, we should want truth to reign. And we should desire like, okay, truth needs to come out. Again, like the, the knee-jerk reactions of, oh, something happened on the news. Where's my bottle? Where's my, my mask? Let me get out here and start raising fuss before the facts come out. That's, that's ignorant. And that yeah. should not be named among us, but it is. And that's the problem. I think we should really look at that. Why is it that we are so willing to subscribe to just about anything, Mm -hmm. just about any narrative that is culturally appropriate? Um, I know we're kind of off a little bit off topic, but I mean, we're saying the exact same things that they're saying it on MSNBC, Fox News, CNN and such like that. That should be a problem. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That should that should cause the Christian church to say, wait, hold on. We're saying the exact same thing as X, Y, Z pagan politician person or yeah. ABC pagan on ABC. I mean, we're saying the exact same things. We should maybe be a little bit mindful of that. Nope. We'll jump yeah. right in there and say the exact same thing. That is why we, that's how you know it's going to be a problem. If you're saying the exact same thing that the world is saying, there's an issue. Right. And that, and that goes deeper to say, okay, so if this is the case, then where does Jesus fit in? Where's the gospel fit into this whole thing? Because last I checked, you sound just like that Republican or that Democrat or that person on the news, like you just said. Okay, so now now what do we do? What do I tell that person who's rioting and they're mad about X, Y, Z? What do I what do I tell them? Oh, I just solidarity. I mean, did you see? Right. Oh, I'm, uh, it's off topic, but it's not. I mean, last June, did you? I think it was in Houston where there was a bunch of folks look just like me. And there was a bunch mm-hmm. of folks that looked just like you. And the my people were kneeling. Yes. Did you see this? Watching it was on feet. Facebook. Yep. Yep. And, there, and the people, your people, were there. And they're standing like this. And these were Christians. And I'm yep. like, I dude, I mean, I, it takes a lot to surprise me and shock me and, 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 and revile Not my me. stomach. That... Oh man, I was I was just I literally screamed at my computer and then like pushed it away. 
And then I read some comments. We were like, oh, solidarity. I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? What is wrong? What, you're kneeling to people? How? What? Like, eh, what? You're pray- it looks like you're praying. Are you praying? Like, hello, don't have any idols. Don't have any other gods before. Like, what is going on? And it's just like, anyway, I'm sorry. I just had to get that off my chest because it's just. Oh. Go ahead. I just, I just want to, again, I, I don't recognize this religion. Because in Revelation, when Paul met, when John met an angel and he was so overcome by him that he fell down to worship him and the angel said, no, 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 worship Christ. An angel told the apostle, don't worship me, worship Christ. But here we are in the 21st century and we have elevated our our knowledge level to the point that people with less melanin literally bow and worship to people with more melanin. Yeah, there's an asteroid coming for us, and we deserve every bit of it, Seriously. every intergalactic bit of it. Oh man, that's so true. Oh, that's a good way to put it. Um, all right, let's. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I'm the king of sidetracks so, sometimes. Here, I, we... I'll I'll jump back in on page ninety nine when it says um, white people can't see without black voices. Yeah, <laughs> and and the high priestess of clownery that I was uh, doing a video on today. She literally said this, like she was talking about. And um, the the mayor of Wakanda, Eric Mason, in a video that I did, um, was talking about how white people should be quiet and listen mm-hmm. to black people. Like, you should just be quiet and listen to me. Yeah. The problem with that is Robin D'Angelo would not... Oh, I did say her name, darn it. The high priestess <laughs> you gotta say, You got to say at least one so people know who you're talking about. I know who okay, you're talking about. It's Robin, and I and she gets all the fingers because I can't Robin. stand her because she, yeah, she needs to eat a burger. Anyway, so Robin, Robin says in here that, um, or said rather in the video that I was reviewing, how white people should be quiet and and listen to black voices. The problem is she wouldn't be quiet and listen to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so by That's default, right. she would listen to me, and I know by default, Eric Mason would not give me a platform. Mm-hmm. By default, because I disagree. So truly, it's only listen to, only be quiet to people who say what we think that they should say. Because if I got up there to say something contrary to that, my black voice wouldn't be elevated. My opinion would not get platformed. And yep. therein is the hypocrisy. But this 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 religion is rooted in hypocrisy. Hence why I write, dear woke Christian, because I want Christians to see that you're you're not even in the in the realm of biblical gospel with this, what we're talking about here, the idea that Richard can't speak because he has less melanin than me or this fictitious thing called whiteness, please miss me with that. All right, let's try. I know. No, he, yeah, he, uh, and I know Mason says it. And then at the bottom there, uh, Mr. Veggie tales himself um, says, we need to listen to voices who study the issues and have the experience, had the experience. And it's like, so again, Go ahead. No, go ahead. So again, I've studied the issues. I have the experience. Yeah. Phil Vischer, my name is Jason. Uh, DearWokeC at gmail.com. Hit your boy up. Yeah. What you got? But so that's the point. Like, but will you platform me? Will you let me get on Phil with you and Sky Jelani and talk about my experience? Let me know. Yeah. What type of vegetable would you be if you were on VeggieTales? What do you think? Holy cow. <laughs> or fruit. Know, you could be a fruit too. I feel like Brussels I'd be sprout? like a Brussels sprout. I'd be like an apple or something. I feel like maybe. I don't know. Anyway, hmm. just came That's to my mind. I was not ready for that one, man. Threw me off. <laughs> it literally just came into my mind. Um, all right. So, I mean, and that's the point, really. And that's why somebody like a Joe Biden, Bo Jiden, um, <laughs> he, he's just, he's just, I don't even want to. It's, he's, he's low hanging fruit. He's so easy. But, he is wrong in every way. And I think I've said this before recently. So he's old, right? He's got the wrong color skin. Mm-hmm. He's yep. straight. Uh, um, all these things. And yet, what does he have next he, to his name? He alleged, he alleged to be um, Christian. Yeah. Oh, he's a Christian. Yeah. But he's got the sex abuse stuff, right? All this, all the stuff that Kavanaugh and Clarence Thomas and all these other guys have been lambasted for years and years and years. 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 Um, even, I mean, it even got Bill Clinton, my goodness. But Biden, what does he have next to his name when it says president or resident Joe Biden? There's a little D mm-hmm. next to his name. Now, if he had an R next to his That's name, 
bad news. And I'm convinced that everybody, I'm, I'm convinced that if Donald Trump could have acted exactly the same, but if you put a D next to his name, everybody would just, the media would just love it because it's just like, ah, oh, I, I, anyway, that's just fictional. But it's, it's all it is, is this singular monolithic. It actually doesn't matter what you look like at all. So we don't want to care about black voices, mm. brown voices, nope. gay voices, rainbow voices, alphabet voices, whatever, trans, cis, blah, blah, blah voices. We don't. They don't want to at all. They don't want to have dialogue. What they want is singular, lockstep, fascist, communist-style stuff. Say this or else. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, sit down. Yep. And that's it. And if no one see, if you don't see that, not you, but just in general, if you don't see that, please wake up because – that's what I mean. This is proving it. I mean, like you say, you, Jason, you don't follow the narrative, right? I, there's plenty of people that look like me, David Platt and, and Chandler. We look like we could, they're my older brothers, right? But they're yeah. off the deep end. I'm not buying that what they're selling, and they shouldn't be buying what they sold or whatever, right? Anyway, I'm getting worked Absolutely. Up, um, yeah, I mean, he mentions Thomas Sowell, McWhorter, John McWhorter. Um, mm -hmm. And again, they don't buy into the nonsense. They, they and they're not Christians though. And so that's where Bach, I, I, I appreciate his <laughs> his wide uh, reading that he's not. I think he talks about this in chapter six. Um, he's not saying, oh, you know, I'm not going to read this. We shouldn't read that. We shouldn't read broadly. Whatever. I think we'll we'll talk about that next time. But uh, nevertheless, again, that proves my point that Thomas Sowell, ninety, he's an economist. Yes. He's, still with it but nobody likes him on the left why because he's talking about personal responsibility and economics and the disparities aren't racial disparities but economic disparities and when you don't have two parents in the home right. and when you do this and when you yeah. believe in the welfare state and you trust the government too much and all these other things the left doesn't like that they just don't yeah anyway i'm right there with you my friend um the he he continues kind of with the whole trend of ethnic Gnosticism with this priesthood laying out with old old Robin um, <laughs> Del Delgado's another one he points out um, goes through I don't know if he includes Jarvis Williams on page one hundred two uh, sorry on one hundred five I'll tell you I had that. And I don't want this all to be about my experience, lived experience. But I remember a few years ago, and one professor I had, great guy, uh, he had kind of critiqued a little bit off the cuff and was like, racial reconciliation, like, what does he mean? Like, reconcile to what? Correct. That's, that is the question that needs to be asked. Well, why, don't you, why don't you give me your experience? What, what has been your thought when, when someone says, hey, Jason, what do you think of racial reconciliation? What do you answer them? I ask them, what is the racial issue? First of all, race is a social construct that we made up, but what is the issue that is being reconciled? Mm. And, and ask that question specifically. So for example, if Richard ran over my dog with his new truck that he got a couple uh, months back, he runs over my dog and he comes to my house and you know, repents to my wife and kids and, you know, maybe buys us a puppy or whatever, you know, to replace it. That, in my opinion, we were at enmity at one point because he ran over my dog and he reconciled by coming and apologizing and, and trying to make it right as best as possible. Yeah. I, to me, that makes good sense. If Richard's living across the street, living his blessed life that God has given him, taking care of his wife and kids, going to work, doing his, doing his life, he owes me nothing. <laughs> you don't need to be reconciled. And I think that's a, a false idea of what reconciliation is, one. And two, I think we don't understand that we've been, those who are in Christ have been reconciled to God. Mm. I think if we fully understood what it meant that we are reconciled to God, when Paul said, at one time you were enemies of God, I don't think we fully understand it. We could almost like literally just stop there and process that. What do you mean we were enemies of God? No, no, mm. no, no. It wasn't Jesus is your boyfriend and, and God, Jesus just wants to be wants to be your homeboy. No, you were, as, as Edward said, you were sinners in the hands of an angry God. Mm. Now, there's with that being the 
case, let's just pretend that fast forward. Now we understand more perfectly what we were, what we how Christ reconciled us. We would be a lot less flippant in saying that we need to be reconciled, man to uh, human to human. When yeah. there's no record, when there's no need, there's no issue. I don't have an issue with Richard. Richard doesn't have an issue with me. Let's keep on living life and loving Jesus. Yeah. But because we've created these false situations, and again, we're, we're biblically illiterate, so we don't fully understand what reconciliation is. So, so we we let the talking head here or the social liberal over here tell us what it is, aka love. You know, in the same vein of love your neighbor. We let them define what that means. So love your neighbor means this. That's not what the Bible says at all. But because yeah. we're functionally biblically illiterate, we don't know better. And so therefore we have these problems. So when somebody says something about racial reconciliation, I was like, well, biblically, it's a person to person reconciliation. I don't see anything that tells me that an entire people group should go reconcile to another people group. Mm -hmm. If in fact that people group has done nothing to the other people group. If you show me that, we can talk about it. Chapter and verse yeah. for me, please. But until then, Richard doesn't owe me anything. He, he's not done anything to me. And I'm not going to use false, um, these false um, definitions, aka whiteness and white fragility and all these other made up terms that people have gotten away with. Nobody challenges them. Mm -hmm. The idea that this is critical race theory and it hasn't been critically analyzed is ludicrous. So, yeah. okay. No, that's good. Um, and, and I guess I would just, I would just add to the racial reconciliation, like you just said with the dog, bad situation, reconcile. Hey, here's a puppy. Really, really sorry. Done. Like husband, wife, they get married. They, you know, think... married 10 years, life, terrible rocks and, and they separate. Right. And they are a year of separation. They've got kids. It's just, just junk. And then he comes to his senses. Generally, it's the guy. Not always. He comes to his senses, comes back and says, I, I love you. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I want to make this right. Divorce is an abomination. It's bad in the eyes of the Lord. I want you, please. It, and they're reconciled. But they were at a certain point beforehand, right? And they were married, right? And they and they mm -hmm. unified and they had children in one flesh and all that. And, but then they separated. Now they're reconciled. That's the thing that I was, I'm still scratching my head. And it's like, so when do when are we supposed to reconcile, right? Like, at what year? Like, two hundred years ago, four hundred years ago, Genesis three. Like, when when is it sixteen eighteen because of the sixteen nineteen? Like, when are we supposed? To, how far are we supposed to go back to reconcile? But again, it's not Williams doesn't say, um, mm -hmm. not to the not that I found, and it's it's just like it's a what is it red herring? You know, just kind of they set it out there. And, you know, you ho they hope you don't look at it, I guess. Um, anyway, you mentioned page but 105. I said, no, I, when you said 102, I had started making my way to 105. Near oh, no, that's Trump's fine. truth. Yeah. And no, go, go with that. No, this is this goes again to the, the point that we've made several times in the story or in this podcast. It's our story. Truth it's our story. We're our living story. our story. It's our story. How yeah, dare absolutely. You? It's living my truth, man. So, <laughs> but allowing story to overtake, or in this example, Trump truth. So like the truth of Breonna Taylor's story, the truth of the Ahmaud Aubrey story, the truth of what happened here in Atlanta, the truth of it gets trumped by narrative, gets yeah. trumped by story. And he doesn't talk a lot about it, but you know, there's the idea of um, retelling story, historical stories from a modern today context mm -hmm. and like um it is called memory study where you're telling a story so i might retell the whole story of christopher columbus from how i feel about it today as if that's true mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it's wow like it's amazing so i i think we're just being primed for 1984 truth be told yeah but well and that and said. that's a good point because um I mean, you know, you got the whole Hitler thing, like tell a lie long enough and it becomes true. You know, yes. whether that was only him, I'm sure others have said that too. But we see that today in our post-truth culture of you, you, and that's your truth. You know, Jesus, I'm glad that you know, Jesus is your your savior, uh, but I don't need Jesus, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. And we've lost objective truth, absolute truth. Um, 
but that's the, that kind of weaves from the multiple altercations, the, the, the killings, murders, incidences, whatever you want to call them, especially of, of 2020, that somebody died. This is what they look like. We're off to the races. The truth doesn't matter. We're going to tell this story and how it makes me feel and all this other stuff as if that's true. And then, like you said, pagans are going to pagan. Do whatever. I love that. Uh, keep pagan. But the church, people of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one, I am the way, the truth, truth. the life. I mean, ninth commandment, don't bear false witness. Like lying isn't good, especially when you're seeking to preserve. I mean, we got midwives, Hebrew midwives and Rahab. And there's some instances that it's like, well, you know, but 99% of the time, when, especially when you're seeking to preserve your own whatever. No, don't lie. I mean, look at Acts 5, Ananias and Sapphira. They're struck down when they lie about how much money they give, you know? And, and you know, because a lot of people like to use that, you know, the Hebrew midwives um, and Rahab, because they did not tell the truth. They did lie. Mm -hmm. um, there's another, there's a couple other stories um, where the, somebody outright lied. And they like to say, hey, well, you know, that's a, so we can lie. We can yeah. lie. The I think the the contrast is these people are they, yes they did Rahab did 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 tell an untruth she did lie um, and that is true Ananias and Sapphira also did let's just compare those situations why mm -hmm. why did Rahab lie and dig into that why did Ananias and Sapphira lie dig into that and I think if we challenge people who profess to be Christian. And think, is this what you want to? Or, so is a is a lie, though Rahab did lie, you're right. Is a lie what you want to use to push forward the gospel, which is truth? Yeah. Is that what you're going to use? So let's just say that, which I'm going to, uh, I challenge that critical race theory is 100% garbage. It is a cult. It is a separate and different religion. But let's just pretend for laughs and giggles that it is not a cult. Let's say that is true. Let's say it's as legitimate as today is uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. Is lying on somebody the way that you're now going to present the gospel to them? Because keep in mind, you've just lied on Richard. Richard has done nothing wrong. Richard has done nothing to, to gin up your Black Lives Matter ire or your critical race theory ire. And now... Because he's, let's say Richard's not a believer. Now Richard is, you know, he's repented. He's paid reparations. He's living under a bridge because he's doing every, all this stuff to to um, appease the, the Black Lives Matter critical race theorists. But he still doesn't know Christ. How are you going to give him the gospel and tell him that Jesus Christ is true mm -hmm. when you just lie to him? Yeah, wow. <laughs> How does that work? And, and I don't think... Again, I think we can get into some tall weeds with the Ananias and Sapphira, the Rahab um, telling the lie. I got you. Um, Abraham lying about his sister. I mean, about Sarah being his sister. Sarah, yeah. There's quite a few examples. There's quite a few examples. Um, the the patriarchs lying to Jacob about Joseph. I mean, there, there's a lot of lies in there. Is that really what you want to try to use as your argument for why you lie on somebody of another ethnicity? Is that really what you... You're going to, that's a lap you're going to take by yourself. Yeah. No, I'm that's not going to you. <laughs> do a lap. Do a lap. Um, <clears throat> yeah. No, that's, that's a good point. Uh, Bauckham, he hits up three examples uh, 106 storytelling and the racism mm -hmm. of American policing. So he hits up, I think he mentions, uh, was it the Prager? Was it Prager U video? It's in here somewhere. He's got a lot of good video. Um, it is. I thought it was on here. I know it was the. Uh, Maybe it was the. He next talks chapter. about three different ones. I guess. Yeah, the liar, the misinformed examples, number two, and then number three, sincerely wrong. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, the Prager U video is basically he taught there's a guy, you know, man on the street thing. And he asks uh, a couple of people, hey, how many black people do you think were murdered by police? Yes. And they're like a thousand, fourteen hundred. And it's like nine. Now, that's still yeah. bad. That's still bad. Right there. We're talking yeah. about real people. We're not just like, oh, it's only nine. Who cares? I'm not saying that. Now, if somebody might, 
I, I don't want people to get shot, even if they're doing something wrong. We need to have justice. You need to go. You need to stand before a judge and go through the process. Don't just get shot on sight. But police are there to protect and serve. At least that's what they're supposed to do, right? Yes. And, you know, it's nine. And there's actually more white folk, less melanin dudes, getting shot by police. Now, do we hear yep. that on CNN? Do we hear that by, you know, Joe Biden? Do we hear that by, you know, your your average uh, Democrat run mayor? No. I mean, it's complete. Nope. And, and, you and if you get anything from from uh, Bauckham's book is that he's turning over the other side. There's more than one side to this mm -hmm. critical social justice, critical theory, wokeness, uh, intersectionality, the oppressive, you know, victim versus victimizer, whatever, whatever you want to use, whatever flavor you want to pick to say, hey, there's disparities in the world. He's taking it and he's turning it over with facts. Now, a lot of people don't like about like facts, but as Christians, <laughs> even if you're on the left side of it and you're like, well, yeah, but well, I challenge you still, you got to be a truth. I mean, this is the fact. The fact is that this guy in April 2018, Reverend Jared Moultrie, I think it is, president of yeah. South Carolina chapter NAACP, he's a pastor, out and out lied. Straight lie. Just, just straight lie. out lie, right? And that's that. I think that's the type of lie, just speaking of we were just talking about that's the type of lie that killed Ananias and Spira. The God said, "No, nope, you're yep. done." Right? Especially being in the early church, and you know, there's reasons why. But he just out and out lies. You know, yeah. oh, racist, rah, rah, rah. and it's like, oh, just kidding. Uh, okay, and you're like, but did that stop? You know, the retraction on probably you know New York Times or CNN or mm -hmm. MSNBC nope. or, the, or the Twitter sphere? No, no, not at all. So it's yeah. I mean, he goes through the other two examples: the misinformed. Um, I don't know how to say her first name to Taraji, maybe P Henson yep. there on page 107 yep. Glendale. Actually, I used to live in Glendale. Um, and she then says, Hey, my son, thank you for that offer to be so kind of my son. I mean, the guy had weed, the guy had Ritalin. Um, he wasn't driving safe. I mean, come on, like, what, what do we want to do here? And it's like, it wasn't because he had more melanin. It was because he was breaking the law, but some people, that doesn't matter. They, they just say, right. well, they just get whatever. And it's like, so you're telling me that certain people, because of how they look, are either dumb and they don't understand it, which that's a whole nother thing for me. It's like, oh, you poor you. You just you look this certain way, which I'm sure you've probably seen. Full and well. that, you've made a great point. And that, that should be brought up. A lot of this, what we're seeing is basically saying, I am too stupid to know the rules. I'm too dumb to know the law. So you have to, or I'm too too ignorant to study or whatever. I'm too deficient to yeah. pass a test. So there needs to be a different lowering of the bar. Just and, and to the listeners who subscribe to critical theory and critical race theory, just play that in your mind. What am I saying about a black person? Yeah. What am I saying when I say that they're, they're so oppressed, that Oprah is so oppressed? Listen to what I just said. Oprah is so oppressed. Like just play that in your head. What am I saying? Like I'm, I'm basically re restating some level of bias, some kind of racial prejudice. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's, no, it's it's adorable. It, it's 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 insane. I mean, and it really it is it's adorable. I like that um, because what they're in the name of justice, so called, they're actually being completely unjust. And mm -hmm. being actually racist, the people who think, "Oh, disparities." There you go. I mean, they are. I mean, that's exactly. They're I mean, there's yeah. there's more. Uh, he's not with Prager U, but there's another guy. Um, oh, I can't remember his name. It's a uh, Ari Horowitz, I think it is. Um, he and he did a bunch of videos last year. I haven't seen him for a while, but he's probably still around. And he did a video, and it was about voting, right, and IDs and whatever. And he was in San Francisco. Interviews. Everybody looks like yes, me, right? Oh, bunch of bunch of hipsters. Him. Have you seen this video? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you he know, said, how hard is it for black people to get a driver's license? Yeah, and yeah, they just or... basically say, y'all are stupid. They don't know how to mm -hmm. do it. They don't know this. Maybe they don't have internet. Maybe they don't know how it works. And then he goes to Harlem, and then everybody's yeah, like, why would I not know how to do that? Why is that racist? Right why would that be this? It's over on 32nd Street. I got a phone. It's right here. My kids have internet. What's the big deal? And it's just like, you idiots. Like, why do you stop listening to the talking heads? that are the actual racist ones in the name of being not racist or anti-racist. Like anyway, it's just. And, 
you know what? I, for some reason, or other maybe we need it. We'll we'll maybe make a a second part of this. Yeah. I, for some reason, or other I just really want to look at Rahab. So if you go to Joshua chapter two and verse nine, this is where Josh where she has already lied to the um to the officials about the spies coming in. She had hid them on her roof under the thatch. Mm -hmm. And this is what she said to him. And I just want people to think about this. I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us and that the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites and who were before or rather who was beyond the Jordan Shiloh and Og among you, the uh, I mean, whom you devoted to destruction. And I'll just stop right there. Mm -hmm. She don't sound like she, she's, she's, though she lied to the officials, she's making a pure statement of truth right here. She know, I mean, it, and please keep in mind, she said the Lord. Yeah. She wasn't saying your Lord or your God. She said the Lord. She's making a statement as if she might even be a believer in, and I think we, I think that's a fair statement to make. So yeah. when when you think about it, yeah, she did tell the the pagans a false truth. You are correct. She did not tell them the truth. She told them uh, fake news or whatever the, whatever the buzzword is today. But she was a true believer. If you jump back to Ananias and Sapphira, they were not, and they were yeah. just coattail riding. Let's see if we can get in good with what's what, what's going on with this new fledgling church thing. So my point in saying that is the idea that. It's okay to lie or to, sh to sh share false information. I don't think we want to get into that, but man, that'd be a good Rahab's one. story is, is much better than what we're making it. Like she just lied. Well, wait, hold on. There's a little bit more to it. And please keep in mind, she's one of the, um, she's recognized as in the hall of faith in Hebrews, yeah, even Hebrews with, even it. having been a liar. Yeah. Yeah, as a harlot, no less. Prostitute, right? She's a hooker. Right. Uh, yeah, actually, I just preached on uh, ninth, ninth Commandment this last Sunday, so it's fresh on my mind. Um, and that, yeah, it's, yeah, that'd be a good video all by itself. Um, here it is, page 110, the Prager U, uh, right mid, mid page. It says, How many people, how many black men <laughs> the police killed in 2019? About a thousand, at least a thousand. Yeah. A third said 1,400. And it was it was uh, nineteen oh nineteen white guys, nine black guys, so like no. twice as many white guys, right? And how many? I mean, I don't remember rioting in in twenty nineteen mm -hmm. and burning down cars and having murals for you know Joe Smith and all these other guys who were killed. Like I didn't even hear about it. Now that's that. This is we're talking about thirty men that are dead, yeah. right? That's yep. still bad, even if they were all wicked law-breaking fools it's still bad that they're dead right because the likelihood yes. is they didn't know christ and now they're destroyed like now we're in destruction eternally and i think people just especially the church we just we're so sucked in to the stuff that's happening right now i want this yes. give it to me now this you know the old adage of the burger king have it your way right have it your way I mean, I get my own iPad, my own this, my own phone, my own that, my own computer, my own, all this stuff. And I want this now. I'm going to swipe my credit card. I'm going to buy it on Amazon. I need my thing. Where's my Starbucks Frappuccino? I need it right now. Like, and now we want justice right now. And we lose sight of people's souls, people's eternity, people's. Yes. Yes. Uh, and it's, we just, the church, you know, the pagans are going to pagan, right? They're just going to do their thing. But as believers, let me let deeper. me just oh absolutely let me just point out something he says on page one eleven. Yep, it's about the it's the last sentence in the second paragraph. He says the very idea of dividing people up by ethnicity, then declaring some of them wicked oppressors and others the oppressed, is inconsistent with the biblical doctrine of universal guilt. Mm. And then he gives Romans 3, 9 through 18. Universal guilt. You know what that is? Total Same. depravity. Yeah. So the idea of and, and understanding that I am a sinner. Like again, I, I joke about this on many podcasts that I talk about, but guess what? In in critical race theory religion, I'm not a sinner. 
Yeah, yeah. that's the man, only that's center is is you. <laughs> yeah, you're the only center in this in this whole deal, Richard. Yeah. And but watch this in that idea. How could how do I come back to being saved? Let's say I'm just a, a an average dude, just living my life, not not a believer in Christ at all. But I've bought into and drunk down all this filth of critical race theory, Black Lives Matters ideology. And again, please, please understand, I'm, I'm saying this in a hyperbole kind of way, but truly, I'm not a sinner yeah. in the black, in the, in the new cult. I'm not a sinner. So how do you now evangelize me yeah. <laughs> when I, I'm effectively I a God? I definitely you sure can. can. Yeah. And, and no. anybody in my... Anybody in my sphere, and keep in mind, anybody in my sphere, they're gods too. They're not mm-hmm. sinners either. And anybody who says differently, a Thomas Sowell or Virgil Walker, anybody else contrary, I've already isolated myself from them, yeah. inoculated myself from So effectively, I've inoculated myself from the gospel. Like, un- unless, uh, I mean, God, God, the Holy Spirit can do anything he wants to do. But just on a human to human level, I've inoculated myself from salvation. Mm-hmm. As, as as Paul said, I've deemed myself unworthy yeah. of it. So, and, and again, I'm, I'm saying it in a hyperbole manner, but I do want people to think about that. Like, how does critical race theory lead one to the gospel? Yeah. The true gospel, not the prosperity gospel, not a um, um, liberation theology, but how does it lead someone to the gospel? Yeah. And no, if and you that, can't find the roadmap, then maybe you should leave it. Get off off that road. Yeah. We'll go. Yeah. The very last, very very last sentence there uh, on one eleven, he says, "If it doesn't come from the Bible, where is it coming from?" Which then in chapter six, he kind of goes through that. Um, but and that's and that's oh, that's such a good point. And it's as you just said that you're you're now seen as a god, right? Or you're going to see yourself yeah. now. You know, okay. Well, they don't really think that. It's like, yeah, but. Some people might. I mean, you know, no. if go ahead. No, I'm like, okay, that's fine. I, I know I'm putting words in their mouths. I know that. I know I'm putting words in, in Robin's mouth, I'm putting words in Jamar's mouth, I'm putting words in Eric's mouth, and in, in Ibram X. Candy. I know that. But really, am I? Am I really, though? Did no, I really I mean, go a lap too far? <laughs> yeah, no, and I don't think you are because ultimately, and I've said that, and it's probably written more than once in my in my copy here, that they're making it. So first of all, you're dumb, right? Y'all people are dumb and you don't need to do this and that. We need to lower the bar. That way you can get into Harvard. You can get an MIT, that sort of thing. And we need to have more CEOs that look like you and all this other stuff. Great. Uh, wrong. Totally wrong. Showing partiality. But further still, on a, on a spiritual level, I mean, again, this is so wicked because they're now saying, and a lot of these people are pagans, right? They're just outright unbelievers. But there are some believers, right? We got the Jarvis Williams, we've got the Eric Masons, we've got these other guys that are saying, you know what, old 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 Whitey, he's the problem. Y'all are fine without saying that, but that's the implication. And yes. how wicked is that to say, you know what, you actually don't need salvation? Like that is literally antithetical to the gospel that you don't actually need deliverance from sin. <laughs> Like, and you know what? I'm gonna, gonna I'm, gonna, like, uh. I'm gonna answer the comment that's being written in the comment section right now. I know that they have not said that outright. I know they, they did not honest, they did not say that. However, I do want you to think what is the sin of 2020 and 2021? What's the sin? Racism. Racism, yeah. yeah. It's a racism, not abortion, not um. Sexual dysfor- uh, dysmorphia, not um, uh, anything else. Lying, cheating, stealing, robbing, all that stuff, kind of like uh, COVID, just kind of went away, you know, like flu went away all of a sudden. But um, yeah, what's the sin? What's the sin of 2020 and 2021? It's racism. Yeah. And I already challenge you that racism is not a real thing. But, yeah. but watch this, watch this. So if racism is the sin of 2020 and 2021, who is the perpetrator? That's right, Richard. So yeah. what do I need to worry about? What do I need to be saved from? What? How, how do you evangelize me when I'm not a racist? <laughs> yeah, because that's <laughs> the, the only yeah, person. You gotta be delivered from racism. And if you're not racist. 
there you go. All I need to do is get rid of you and, and you give me your paycheck and we're good. Yeah. So again, again, I want you to think now, again, I could be 100% wrong. And I again, I know you're not going to find Eric Mason saying that. You're not going to find a video of Jamar Tisby saying that. Will you? If you're but really listening to these guys. But that's the right. That's the implication. It's you not. It out. If you really sit and listen, I listen to quite a few of these people's sermons mm -hmm. and speeches. If you really tease them out and really listen to them, what is he saying? What are they saying? Mm -hmm. And again, I don't care about pagans. Pagans are going to keep paganing. I'm talking about people who profess to be pastors and, and preachers and in the body of Christ. What are you actually saying about Christ? That that only thing Christ cares about is quote unquote social justice. Only thing Christ cares about is racial injustice. I'm not saying that, that we shouldn't be concerned about those things, but really the ultimate concern is race because that's the biggest sin. That is the sin. I mean, New York can sign a bill and people celebrate and cheer in the street to murder babies at wholesale levels. But the sin of, but our sin is, uh, is racism. Yeah. All right, bro. All right. This has been good. Um, too much, too much to cover, but we're going to do this again. And uh, yeah, until, until next time, everyone be against the world for the sake of the world. All right. Take care, y'all. Take care. Grace and peace. See ya.